Welcome back to video 2 of the No Bullshit Guide to Java Spring Boot. Today we are going to directly interface with the database. So we're going to create a new product table in MySQL and create a new product class in Java. Java maps to MySQL via the ORM or the Object Relational Mapper. The ORM that's default to Spring Boot is Hibernate, which is the one we will be using. We're going to have a deep dive discussion on ORMs later. For now, you just need to know that it links a Java class to a table in MySQL, and it allows database reads and writes. So here is our abstraction so far. We have a controller, which listens for requests. We have the service layer. This is where the business logic lives. And today, we are adding in the repository, which is how we make database calls, and an entity. An entity is just a fancy name for a Java class or a table in MySQL. And just FYI, right now, we're going to manually run our MySQL scripts to create a new table and then propagate that table with some dummy data. There is a way for Spring Boot to automatically generate the MySQL query and run it. We're going to cover this later. Uh, we need to do it manually first to understand what it's actually doing. OK, let's organize our code a little bit better. Within the product folder, we're going to create a new package called services and move all of our services in there. Next, create a new folder called model. And in that folder, create a new class called product. Annotate it with at entity. This is what maps a Java class to MySQL. Then annotate it with at data. This comes from Java Lombok. Then annotate it with at table with a name of product. This will define what the table name is in MySQL. Our product is going to have four characteristics a private integer ID, a private string name, a private string description, and a private double price. For this first field, we need to annotate it with at ID because all tables in MySQL need a primary key. Then annotate it with at generated value with a strategy of generation type dot identity. This will auto generate our ID and start counting at one, one, two, three, etc. Then annotate it with at column with a name of ID. This tells MySQL that the column name will be ID. Then annotate the name with at column name is equal to name. And do the same thing with the other fields, giving them appropriate names. OK, next up, create a new interface called a product repository. We're going to annotate it with at repository, which tells Spring Boot that this is a repository for the database. It is going to extend JPA repository, angle brackets, with the entity type of product and a primary key of integer. This gives us access to some free methods. Next, let's make our way over to the get product service. And one way we could do this is use the at auto wired annotation for dependency injection and then use field injection with private product repository of product repository, which we can then reference below. Product repository dot find all. And this is one of the free methods that was given to us. This returns a list of product. So now we can just directly return that in the body. And then remember to update your types. So this is no longer a string. This is a product, and the same thing down here. And then you have to do the same thing over on the controller as well. So this will work, but we're going to go ahead and replace the field injection with constructor injection. So this will be the last time that we use field injection. We're going to do it the right way from now on. And now we have constructor injection. OK, and now you can start up your project. But before we ping it in Postman, we need to set up our database. So make your way over to MySQL Workbench and run these three scripts. So the first one is use no bsv2. If you have multiple databases, you want to tell it which one you're using. Then we want to create our table of product. Our ID is an int. It is going to auto increment. And this will be our primary key. Our name will be a varchar with a length of 255. Varchar is basically a string. Description is also a varchar of 255. And we have a double price. Then we need to insert some dummy data. So insert into product. 
a name, description, and price, these values. You can copy these in the description. Notice we did not pass in the ID. We only passed in the name, description, and price. SQL automatically generates the ID for us. Click the little lightning bolt at the top, and you should see three green check marks corresponding with each of the three queries. To double check, you can then do a select star from product and see your entities in the database. Now you can make your way over to Postman, and we're going to ping the get product endpoint. And we now see a list of products. And notice how it automatically converted it to JSON for us. Now, one thing I would like to change, technically this was not get product, this was get all of the products. So I'm going to rename my method to get products and my service class to get product service. Okay, now that we have the first example of repository up and running, we are now ready to go full CRUD. Remember CRUD stands for create, read, update, and delete. So for our post, put, get, and delete mappings, we want to interact with the database appropriately. So I know this table looks complicated. Let's just go through it really slowly. On the left-hand side, we have post. So with a post, the UI will need to send the product in the request body as JSON. So we need to grab that and then convert it to a product. With a post, you do not need an ID because you're creating a new one and our system will automatically generate our ID for us. The URL is going to be slash product. Our response status is going to be a 201 created. And our response body is going to be a product DTO. On the very next slide, we'll explain what a product DTO is. Notice that this is optional. Technically, if you just send it off and you get a 201 created back, that might be enough information for your system. But a lot of systems, it makes sense to go ahead and return the product DTO immediately. That way you can use it. Next up, we have a put. So again, you need to send the product that you're updating in the request body. In this case, you do need the ID of the product because you need to know which one are you modifying. The URL is gonna be slash product and then slash ID. So we need to send the ID of the one we want to update in the URL. The response status is gonna be a 200 okay. And the response body is gonna be the same. It's gonna be a product DTO, but technically this is optional. This is just where you need to ask your senior developer on what he wants you to do. Next up, we have a get. So a get, we do not send the product in the request body. We're trying to find a product. We do need to send an ID, obviously. The URL will be slash product slash ID. We're going to send a 200 status, and then you have to send the product DTO back. That's the whole point. And then lastly, we have a delete mapping. We do not need to send the product in the request body. We do need the ID of which one to delete. We're gonna return a 204 no content, and then the response body, of course, will be nothing. Okay, so a DTO, or response object, essentially, we don't always want to send the entire object back. Tables can be 80 columns wide in some applications, so a DTO, or data transfer object, or a response object, basically only returns the data that you need for that endpoint. So what we need to do is take a product from the database, convert it to a product DTO, and then send it back to the UI. This is kind of like projection. If you want to look that up, it's not exactly projection. But essentially, we're taking a product, throwing away the fields that we don't care about, and then creating a product DTO, and then sending it. OK, in our model folder, go ahead and create a new class called product DTO. Annotate it with at data. This comes from Java Lombok. It's only going to have three fields, an integer of ID, a string name, and a string description. Then let's create our constructor. It's going to take in a product and then just set the values. Go to your controller, and we're going to work on these endpoints one by one. So our create product endpoint, we need to get the product in the form of JSON. So we use at request body, product product, and then we're going to pass the product into the execute method. Go over to your service class, and we need to update this. So instead of the input being void, the input will now be a product. Instead of the output being a string, the output will now be a product DTO.
Next, we need access to our repository. So private final product repository, product repository, and use constructor injection. Then we can access it here. We're going to call product repository dot save. This save method returns a product, the one that you just saved. So let's capture that. And then in our response entity body, we're going to say new product DTO, and then we pass in our saved product. And that's all we have to do for this one. And then on the controller, make sure you also convert string to product DTO. We also need to update the mapping, but we're going to do that all at once. Moving on to our next one. Let's update our return in our execute method. We're going to change a list of products to a list of product DTOs. And here we're just going to convert them. So list of product DTOs, product DTOs is equal to products.stream.map, product DTO new to list. And then we'll pass that list in. If you're not familiar, we're using the Java Streams API. You can look it up and learn it in about 10 minutes. We do need a new mapping to find by ID for a get product by ID, not just all of them. So let's create a new service class, get product service. We're going to annotate it with the at service annotation. It's going to implement query. The input is an integer, and the output is a product DTO. Inject your product repository using constructor injection. Then we can call one of our built-in methods, product repository dot find by ID. This returns an optional of product, which basically accounts for can you find it or not. So next we can call if product optional is present, then we can go ahead and return response entity of a new product DTO. And then we pass in the product optional and we call the dot get method on the optional. If you're not familiar with optionals, again, you can look it up. It'll take you about five minutes. In the future, we will want to throw an exception here saying, hey, we can't find the product and send a good message back to the UI. But for right now, we're just going to move on. Next, we need to set up our endpoint to handle it. So at get mapping, get product by ID. And then this time, we need to pass in a path variable of integer ID into the method, which we're going to handle in just a second. We need to pass our service class in into our constructor and add the field. Then return get product service dot execute and pass in the ID. Next up is our put mapping. The put mapping is the most complicated because we have to pass in the ID and the product. So at path variable integer ID and request body product of product. So we need to pass two things into our execute method, but our execute method is only built to be able to accept one thing. So we have to create another class whose job it is just to hold these two items. We're going to call this update product command. Annotate it with at getter. Private integer ID, private product product, and then a constructor with both things. Then passing into our execute method, we'll say new update product command, where we pass in the ID and the product. Instead of void, this is now going to be an update product command. And instead of string, this is going to be a product DTO. And do the same thing on your method. Inject your product repository dependency. Again, we need to get an optional product from the repository where we find by ID by using the command dot get ID. And then we'll call if the product optional is present, then what we want to do is get the product from our command, set its ID to the ID we got from the command, and then call product repository dot save. 
Save is an interesting method because it can either create a new entity or update an entity. Then we'll call responseEntity.ok, where we generate a new product DTO. And again, for now, if we can't find it, we'll just return null. Later on, we want to have a really nice exception. And last but not least, our delete mapping. Go ahead and pass in at path variable with integer ID and pass in ID into our execute method. Our input is now going to be an integer and our output is going to be void. Update your method accordingly. And again, inject the product repository dependency. And then again, optional product, product optional is equal to product repository dot. This time we're going to call find by ID. And then if it's present, we're going to call product repository dot delete by ID. Then return response entity dot status of no content. And don't forget to build. And again, we're going to have an exception here later. The last thing we need to do is update our endpoints to include the URL. So let's do these all together. So delete will be slash product slash ID in squirrely braces. And this is very important. ID on line 63 must match ID on line 64 exactly. Put mapping will have the same format. Our get product mapping will also have the same format. We'll change the get mapping for all products to just slash products. And then our post mapping can be just slash product. Okay, go ahead and start up your project. Making our way over to Postman, let's create a new endpoint. This will be our get product endpoint. And then let's go one by one and update and then ping each endpoint. So for our post mapping, it's going to be slash product. And then in the body, go ahead and click raw and make sure it says JSON. Then add in some squirrely braces with a name, description, and price. When we click send, it sends us back a product DTO. So it didn't send us back the price, good, and it generated an ID for us. For our get products request, go ahead and add in slash products and send, and you can see all of them were returned. For get product, I can do slash product slash one, and it sends me just the first one. If I type in one that doesn't exist, it just sends me back nothing, which again, we need to fix this in the future. For our put, we're gonna do the same thing we did with post, except we're gonna have an ID in the URL, and then also click raw, and then send the same JSON. And you can see that it was updated. Lastly, for our delete mapping, you can say slash product slash one, and it sends us back a 204 no content. And then if I do a get all, you can see that number one was in fact deleted. I also like to check in my SQL to make sure everything worked appropriately. So if I do a select star from product, I can see that I now have IDs two, three, and four with the updated values, and I can see that ID number one was deleted.